it's a very very historic airplane especially for this place over here because this was Marshal Dito's uh, personal airplane and it was uh, an airplane which was used uh, actually built between 1946 and 1958 and actually this is the penultimum one built so it was uh, 1958 when it was delivered to the Air Force of Yugoslavia and was used then as Marshal Dito's uh, uh, personal airplane. He was flying around yeah, quite long distances with it. So we have even have found a picture about him flying to Australia. And it was made for long distance flying. So it was the first generation of long range airplanes which went over the Atlantic without stopping. Uh, so it was the Douglas DC-6 uh, together with the Lockheed Constellation which made that kind of Atlantic crossing possible. So therefore it's very, very historic. And actually it's the only one in the world of those uh, four engine prop liners, which is still certified for passenger transport. So there's no other uh, airplane like this on the world except uh, for the, uh, the, the Flying Bulls operation. We are based at Salzburg. We have a nice museum and a nice hangar there. And of course everybody is invited to come, it's free of charge and uh, see this airplane together with other airplanes. Uh, it's, it's unique uh, uh, for flying because it's another era. So you really have to sink yourself back into this. It's an airplane which you really have to drive. It's not like today with, uh, with a joystick. So there's no mm -hmm. hydraulic, so it's like uh, driving a big lorry, a uh, big van uh, without servo. But uh, if you're getting used to it, it's a very, very nimble aircraft. Uh, it's of course a little bit slower than a modern jet, but at that time it was uh, with a maximum speed around 450 to 500 kilometer, one of the fastest airplanes on earth. So yeah, of course the generation is uh, changing, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it's still a beautiful airplane. And uh, yeah, the, the, the cockpit is mainly original, but we had of course to build, a, uh, build in some modern avionics and we are able to fly it under nearly all circumstances. So if the weather is bad, we have a weather radar on board, we have de-icing capabilities. And this was also the first generation of airplanes which, uh, with a pressure, uh, pressurized cabin. So you could fly much higher than mm. they used to fly in the 30s or the very early 40s. With this airplane, you could go up to 25,000 feet. It's a little bit lower than a modern airplane is flying, but. Uh, under most circumstances, you were able to fly over the, the weather, so it, make, uh, it made flying much more comfortable as, uh, as, as it was uh, in earlier days. So it's very, very iconic generation of airplane. Yeah. Uh, what is also a kind of thing you have to get used to is you have a flight engineer. So you have two pilots, a flight engineer, and the flight engineer is just monitoring all the engine parameters. He has uh, the most to do on the, uh, in the cockpit. And you just let him know what kind of power you would like to have. And he is adjusting all those situations. Do so, you maybe have some negative experience anytime? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. This airplane can't uh, give you uh, <laughs> negative experiences. No. Honestly, so of course those engines are not that reliable than uh, modern uh, aircraft engines because those are piston engines and therefore it might happen sometimes that there are small uh, things uh, to be fixed which we had uh, even over here but normally we have really good uh, flight engineers and, uh, and, and, and very perfect uh, uh, mechanics mm -hmm. who take care about the airplane and I think that's uh, that's the most important to have good people who uh, repair them, who fly them, who are interested and who would like to also keep this, uh, uh, this historic aviation alive. Yeah.